Hello, welcome back. Today, as promised, I will show you the installation of the Zikoi X45 turboprop in a horizontal installation as opposed to the vertical firewall installation as it is on, on my PC21. Here again, thank you to my friend Jos who let me have his plane where we installed his engine to show you what we had to do to be able to install it in a way like this. But uh, before we go into the installation itself, I would show you a little reminder of the mechanical components of such a two-stage turboprop because, to be honest, I do not really like this type of installation just for the reasons uh, I will show you now. So this is the manual of my first turboprop, which was some 20 years ago when I built it myself based on these drawings. And it was a development of uh, Mike Murphy, but the basics and the mechanical components are still the same. So this is still a good support to show you the basics of a turboprop. You can see these are all the drawings of the second stage and with it uh, was also a detailed description which has about the same size. Let's have a look inside. So here we have the drawing of the second stage of the engine. In fact, the setup is the same as you have on uh, Pratt and Whitney PT6 full-size turboprop, for example. So here at the back, seen from uh, the plane, at the back you have your turbine engine which is also called the gas generator with its turbine wheel. After that, you have a set of guide vanes before uh, the gases will enter the turbine. This, the orange section, is your second stage turbine wheel, which is on a shaft going to the gearbox. So this is the gearbox part, and here you have the prop. So to show you what I mean is, on this system of installing the engine, it is held on one side on the gas generator and on the other side at the front of the gearbox. But the only connection between the engine, the gas generator and the gearbox is this set of vanes uh, right behind your turbine wheel. As they are relatively small, your engine may tend to bend and all these forces go through this also called spider and to show you the problem you can see here this is the drawing of this spider itself it has a couple of not really veins but struts to link the outer where it is connected to the interstage guide veins and the inner ring is connected to your shaft tunnel where the gearbox is also fixed on at the front. So you can see that these struts are really thin and also here there is not much material to hold it really strongly. So we are lucky on the Zikoi engine that we have this frame all around which strongly connects the front, the gearbox, where the prop forces come on directly to the rear of the engine. So there is almost no stress on this spider ring. So that's one of the purposes why I do not like this type of mounting. Uh, on other engines you no, do not have these extra frames to, to hold it. So uh, you can have two workarounds so as you see from the drawing, the turbine fixed on its shaft, there is some overhang after the bearing here. So if these parts would slightly bend, it will cause your turbine wheel to go off center and possibly touch the outer ring of the spider. So to counteract this, you have two solutions either you shorten uh, the blade, so usually the gap here between the turbine wheel and the outer ring is about one to two tenths of a millimeter. But if this is loose, so without the frame 
as on the Zikai engine, you will have to have a greater tip clearance, which in turn is loss of power going to your gearbox. The other possible solution could be that perhaps you strengthen these struts, but then you will lose some area for the passage of your gases to the outside. So again, you might lose some power there. So that's one of the reasons why I do not like this mountings. Fortunately, we have this workaround to be able to install it like this. And the other reason is, as your exhaust part, your second stage is open, and during operation it constantly has uh, about 400 to uh, 600 degrees centigrade, it diffuses a lot of heat. So all the air being drawn in by the engine is heated up with this heat of the exhaust part. Uh, you may remember that for a turbine engine, every degree more you have on the intake will give you three degrees more on the exhaust. I don't know exactly how much the air is heated here, but it seems obvious to me that it might be at least 10 or even more degrees more than if the engine only gets cooled air from the front or any other openings uh, from the plane. So this said, let's have a look now at the installation itself. So what we did here is we kept the original frame, of course, for the reason I explained. And we simply added these ears on the sides to mount it on the horizontal platform. And we added these angled ears to mount it onto the front former. So uh, we absolutely, for the reasons I just explained, wanted to keep these frames, which are normally meant to be mounted with these uh, original ears onto a vertical firewall. We simply took them off and used the holes that were on the frame together with these holes which are holding the back plate here to install a couple of L-shaped aluminum pieces. So this is nothing fancy as a material. It's simply L-shaped aluminum bar from the hardware store. And this is the same, only that uh, here we have four millimeters thickness and these are two millimeter thickness. So I drew these uh, frames on the CAD program and developed these angle parts. And then we milled these wooden parts. Usually I mill prototypes from MDF wood just to check the fit before actually uh, milling the real part. So for the rear parts, we simply made these templates out of wood again and used them to manually cut these parts and drill the holes. So that was not a, a big deal. The only thing we had to uh, keep in mind is that the line where it is bolted on is the center. So these ears are slightly offset. Uh, of course, to have this surface as uh, the center of the engine. So that's why one of them is narrower than the other one. For the front part, we did the same. We also made these out of wood to check the fit. And then I milled them on my uh, milling machine. So that was the parts we had to make for the engine. Now uh, for the plane, we noticed that unfortunately here the front part was slightly twisted. So we had to adjust the original holes in the former here in front and we slightly had to tilt them. It was uh, half a millimeter one down and half a millimeter the other one up. And we made a new former which we added in front and also to get the right length to the front of the cowl. As this was twisted and we needed a flat surface, we made a quick board here. Once we had the holes in front straight, we made this board 
I had two two millimeter pins here just clamped against it to go into the two holes and as they are two millimeters flat against the bottom wall of the holes the underside of the board is uh, exactly the surface we need to mount it straight on. You could of course also um, refer to the front holes and then put some thin plywood or fiberglass sheet whatever you have handy just here under the ears but we chose to have uh, the whole surface flat so we know where we are anywhere on the surface the other point of this type of mounting is as i said that the engine draws warmed up air by the exhaust so what we did there was we made some kind of a cowling to close this area here so that the engine only gets cold air from uh, outside as just wanted to have something transparent here as he wants to see his engine we made up a simple mold like this it is all the thick plywood where I simply milled a different number of, of templates the, the design was made in, in CAD, I simply lofted uh, the surface of this round shape to the round shape in front and this gave this shape and we made it back to back so as you want to thermoform it, uh, it is better to have a rounded shape all around for the, the plastic to follow the shape so that was that and the outcome is this bit it is the plastic part with some wood to hold it and the former here to avoid the plastic from touching the engine which will probably not stand the heat so it is inserted like this and then fixed with four screws around here so now we have separated the heated area from the engine intake area which is really important people who have uh, planes with this type of installation I have never seen anyone doing this but on the other hand I have seen pilots at shows when it was really hot outside uh, finally they couldn't fly because when accelerating they had compressor stalls and they said yes uh, Turbines are no good for hot temperatures, but I never had this problem because I really looked after this to keep these two volumes separate. So obviously we had to do the same separation at the bottom. So here we added another former to separate the two areas. And what we also did was here on the underside we added these two holes because i found that here the front holes which allow the air coming from the cowling are not very large to let enough air to the area where the engine intake is usually for this uh, size of engine it is best to have at least a hundred square centimeters of area where the air could go in 100 centimeters is about 16 square inches so 4 by 4 inches that's the minimum surface you want to have here we have in addition the wheel well which is open if you might install gear doors you must take into account that this is closed and you need some area somewhere in, in front to, to get enough fresh air for the engine one point for the front former here uh, when I install it again you can see that the lubrication for the gearbox here goes right to the area where the former is so we had to cut out the former here for the lubrication feed to be able to exit here and not to touch the former of course on the other hand one of the advantages of this type of installation is that you have 
clearly separated your cool air coming in from the front from the hot area here so the air from outside can pass underneath and go up towards the engine intake and here you also have of course your rpm pickup and this time it is easier to route your cable because you are always away from the exhaust and protected against it as you have this uh, separation on a conventional uh, vertical firewall installation you may also want to make some balsa sheet here on top of the air intake uh, i haven't done it uh, on my plane so far i will first test the temperatures but i have flown this engine already on it and it did not make a problem but if it should make a problem in hot temperatures i will also add maybe some balsa sheet uh, sandwiched with some fiberglass on both sides to separate the air intake from the hot area here on the cowling as i showed on mine before we also have installed these inlets to get some cool air to the gearbox from the bottom and from the top so on both sides we have installed these intakes again and on top the same for the outlet so as the hot air anyway goes upwards it will exit uh, here so next step will then be to make a pair of exhausts i have these zimmerman uh, bows which are 45 millimeters in diameter and uh, it's uh, 90 degrees bent uh, i will cut them in half and then add some sheet spot welded around it to fix them uh, onto the original exhaust the original zikoi exhausts are 44 millimeters so with an extension sheet inside of the zimmerman exhaust just fine to come down to 44 millimeters uh, diameter so i will show you that in detail in the uh, next video so this is about it for this type of mounting if any of you would like to have the drawings of the parts we made just send a quick email to zikoi and they will forward me your email address so i can send you the drawings as far as i know uh, at zikoi they are developing a frame with ears specially made for this type of installation but for now i think the priority is production uh, which is obvious to let you guys have your engine you ordered as soon as possible but to be able to finish the plane and to get just to fly it uh, as soon as possible we made this little workaround which i am sure will work perfectly well so that's all for this time if you have any questions please send them to zikoi and they will forward them to me if i can answer them so bye bye see you next time